The time is 10 a.m. on WKYT Midmorning. New details about a crash in Bourbon County. Investigators have now identified the cyclist who was killed. How friends of a murdered UK student plan to honor his life and legacy. 30,000 runners are about to take part in the 120th Boston Marathon. I'm Don Champion in Boston with a look at heightened security and some of the inspirational stories coming out of this year's race just ahead. This is WKYT Midmorning. Good morning to you and welcome in after a wonderful weekend here in the Commonwealth. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. Two beautiful days. Oh. Let's make it three. You know the amazing starting thing? Starting out, out the same we way. We get it. I know. It's pretty amazing. So enjoy it while yeah, it lasts. It continues to look good. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, what's really wild is we actually hit 80 degrees in a few locations yesterday. We'll be even warmer than that. Maybe two to five degrees warmer. Uh, than what we were just 24 hours ago. So there's a big time swing of temperatures as we travel off into the afternoon. Look at my friends in Moorhead in Rowan County. You're 72 degrees. That goes for Lakeview Heights as well, right across Highway 60. I mean, it's a really nice day already. 68 now in Danville. And very warm conditions later on this afternoon. We're calling for 83 degrees. And we focus on the forecast the next few days with that heat sliding on in here. But we do have some rain in the forecast multiple days. I'm going to show you when you can expect the first time coming up. All right. Easy weather to enjoy. Thank you very much. And new on WKYT at midmorning, we have now learned the victim of a deadly Bourbon County crash was a well known Lexington cardiologist. The coroner says Dr. David Cassidy was killed yesterday while riding his bicycle. The 62-year-old was hit by an SUV on Lexington Road in Paris. At this point, that driver has not been charged. Cassidy was a cardiologist at St. Joseph Hospital in Lexington. We're reaching out to his co-workers and others who knew him. And we'll have a full report on WKYT News at noon. Today, a community will come together and mourn the loss of a young man who was murdered in Lexington. Jonathan Kruger was shot and killed a year ago on Maxwell Street. The 22-year-old was a University of Kentucky student and a photographer for the student newspaper, The Kentucky Colonel. Three men accused in his murder are set to go on trial early next year. UK's School of Journalism plans to honor Kruger today at noon. A Lexington man is in jail, accused of torturing a dog to death. Police say Michael Hawkins threw the small dog into a pond before hitting it several times with a broom. The dog died from its injuries. Hawkins will be arraigned this afternoon. Visitation is today for 17-year-old Tristan Cole, who was found murdered in Mercer County last week. Another juvenile is charged with murder in this case. Cole's visitation is this afternoon at Alexander and Royalty Funeral Home. His funeral will be there tomorrow. A Lexington Road has reopened after a crash snarl traffic during the morning commute today. That crash happened about 6.30 this morning on Paris Pike near Muir Station. A truck lost control and ended up on its side. The driver was not hurt, but the inbound lane of Paris Pike was shut down while crews worked to clean up that mess. Today, police could testify in the case against a southern Kentucky man who was accused in a deadly hit and run. Williamsburg police say Adam Childers was drunk when he crashed into Richard Perkins on US 25. Perkins was out walking his dog on Town Hill there at the time. Childers is charged with murder, DUI, and leaving the scene of an accident. A former Lee County Circuit Clerk who admitted to stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from taxpayers will learn her sentence today. Emma Adams pleaded guilty to abuse of public trust. The Administrative Office of Courts says Adams set up a fake bank account, used fake receipts, and took money every week. She was asked to retire and did before she was charged. A weekend fundraiser for a historic Kentucky store ended in tragedy. Police say a motorcyclist was killed in a crash on Route 338 in Boone County. The 46-year-old from Indiana was riding in an event to raise money for the Rabbit Hash General Store. The 185-year-old store was badly damaged in a fire in February. 
Well, athletes are taking part in the 120th running of the Boston Marathon today, and they're doing so amid tightened security. Very tight security. Today's Boston Marathon marks the third time since the 2013 bombings that killed three people and injured hundreds more near the finish line. Don Champion reports from Boston. On the eve of the iconic Boston Marathon, workers painted the symbolic blue line that guides runners to the finish line. Along the 26.2-mile route, police will be forming a blue line of their own. We have a lot of undercover officers working the crowd. We have bomb-sniffing dogs. Any marathon, when you cover that amount of distance, unfortunately, um, you can never say the whole route is secure. Boston Police Commissioner William Evans ran the 2013 race when two terrorists set off pressure cooker bombs near the finish line, killing three people. Patrick Downs lost a leg in the bombings. Today, he'll run the marathon for the first time with his prosthetic leg, raising money for students with physical disabilities along the way. We want to help to ensure that other people with disabilities are also celebrated. For the obstacles that they've overcome. Many runners taking part in the marathon had to qualify. Some say the way the city came together after the bombings inspired them to be here. Just because that happened, we're not going to stop. We're not going to stop running, and that's not going to be the end of this race. Richard Webster crossed the finish line two minutes before the bombings. He says today is about moving forward. Let's celebrate the fact that we're alive, that we're running, and that there's more good in this world than evil. 30,000 runners will take part in the race. Don Champion, CBS News, Boston. And by the way, today's race also marks 50 years since the first woman completed the race. A South African judge has set Oscar Pistorius' sentencing for June. The 29-year-old double amputee and former Olympian was found guilty of murdering his girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp, on Valentine's Day in 2013. Pistorius had appealed his murder conviction, arguing that a lower court was wrong when it overturned his manslaughter conviction and found him guilty of murder. The minimum sentence for murder in South Africa is 15 years, but a judge could reduce that. The 2016 presidential contenders are making a final push for votes ahead of tomorrow's crucial New York primary. A win would push GOP frontrunner Donald Trump even closer to clinching the Republican Party nomination over rivals Ted Cruz and John Kasich. On the Democratic side, polls show Hillary Clinton holding a 10-point lead over rival Bernie Sanders. Staff for both Democratic candidates are making plans for Kentucky's primary, which is now just a month away. And if you want to vote on May 17th, today is the last day to register. Kentuckians can now register and update their registrations online at GoVoteKY.com. County clerk's offices will accept online applications until midnight, and they will accept paper voter registration applications until the close of business. Mail-in voter registration applications must be postmarked by today. Well, a woman may replace Andrew Jackson on the $20 bill. Sources are telling CBS News an announcement is expected this week and that Alexander Hamilton's portrait will remain on the $10 bill. The change is not expected until 2030. Well, speaking of money, today is the deadline to file your income tax returns. Most people got three extra days to file due to the Emancipation Day holiday in Washington, D.C. Lots of companies are offering up deals for tax day. You can stop by Great American Cookie for a free sugar cookie. And Sonic is offering 50% off cheeseburgers. Take a little so there you have it. Take a little sting out of the taxes. I can make it a little <laughs> easier to go through all of it. We'll keep it here on Mid-Morning. Back in a moment, Americans are emotionally attached to their cars, but one age group in particular tends to take automobile affection to the next level. Details on America's changing car culture after weather. It's all about the temperatures next 48 hours, but then we get past that, and we're going to be looking at some showers and thunderstorms later on this work week. I'm going to go over that forecast coming up next. Now, your zone-by-zone zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Such a good look a day anywhere you look. We're already in the 60s and even a couple of 70s out and about. It's 67 degrees right now in Jackson and Breathitt County. We're in the mid 60s, London, Corbin area, upper 60s, Lexington, closing in on 70 there in Frankfurt. Doesn't matter where you look, where you turn. It's just an awesome looking and good feeling day, too. I will tell you this 
You get deep into your afternoon, and we're talking those conditions to actually ramp up, get right around low to mid 80s. And that will put us actually 10 to 15 degrees above average. Some of us could be 17, 18 degrees above average, and average right there in the mid 60s. Much more sunshine ahead, too, not only for today, but for tomorrow. This is your next 48 hours. Just warm, sunny, everything looks good. No real chance at any rain anytime soon until we hit Wednesday off towards your Friday. But uh, today's talkers, obviously, it's about the warm air. Everybody will feel it. And a lot of that sunshine still with us. So it's beautiful weather. You heard that yesterday. You heard that the day before and the day before. We're doing it all over again today and tomorrow, too. Once we hit Wednesday, it's a small chance of rain. Then we have Thursday, it's a little better chance of rain. Then we have Friday, and it's a much better chance of rain. I would say Friday is your best chance to actually pick up on some of these showers, some of these rumbles of thunder rolling on through with percentages there around 60%. Now, what you're going to see are you're going to see these temperatures drop because today and tomorrow, a lot of sunshine, and that allows those temperatures to get up to the 80s. But once you start throwing cloud cover in here, blocks that sunshine and it drops our temperatures each and every day and not only the clouds but also the rain that 64 on Friday is not because of cold air or cool air it's actually because the rain is just overhead and it won't allow those temperatures to jump up so uh, that's just what we're going to be watching for there on Friday and then we jump back to the 70s there for the weekend as we travel off towards your Saturday and Sunday guys those days look pretty good too and those days will actually be better than this past weekend. I know you say, I don't know if that's possible, but you got to remember this past weekend, if you were outside Saturday and Sunday toward the late afternoon, it got a little bit warm. You started sweating a little bit. This coming up weekend, 70, 75, no, nah, you won't sweat in that. That's perfect weather right there. So we're, we're going to have back to back weekends looking and feeling pretty nice. You got to love this forecast. Finally. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> swing no question about yeah, that one. I was going to say, we, we, we <laughs> went through some winter, didn't yes, we? we did. All right, thank you. Well, millennials really love their cars. In fact, a recent study by eBay Motors finds younger folks are more likely to have an emotional attachment to their vehicles. They name them, you know, for that reason, they're more, much more likely to name their cars. Nearly 40% of millennials name their cars according to this new study that has come out. The most popular names are all with B's. Betsy, Baby, Bob, and Buddy. Old Faithful and Old Reliable are also popular choices as well. So, <laughs> there you go. Well, that's right. You know, I've never done that. Maybe I need to come <laughs> up with a name for my car. You already have a B name like me, so you could be, uh, you know, Barb's something. <laughs> Barb's something. Okay, that's really catchy. I like that. Actress Amber Heard has pleaded guilty to providing a false immigration document after she allegedly smuggled her dogs to Australia. Prosecutors dropped two more serious charges that Heard illegally imported uh, her uh, Yorkshire Terriers named Pistol and Boo into the country last year. She was there with her husband Johnny Depp, the Kentucky native, who was filming the fifth movie in the Pirates of the Caribbean series. I am truly sorry that Pistol and Boo were not declared. Protecting Australia is important. Declare everything when you enter Australia. Heard could have gone to prison for up to 10 years, but will now avoid jail time. Didn't seem to I, think she was going to there. No, <laughs> I, I guess maybe this is the end of the story, I guess. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Well, a pair of films about family are getting some attention at the Tribeca Film Festival in New York. And both films star their directors. Terry Okita has your eye on entertainment. Katie Holmes hit the red carpet in New York for the premiere of her new film at the Tribeca Film Festival. Holmes stars in All We Had, a movie that is also her directorial debut. It's a drama about a mother and a daughter facing hard times. Their relationship, I felt, was unique in that they shared a struggle. They, they're two people that lived in their car. And, um, experienced some, some downfalls. Stefania Owens plays Holmes' daughter. Nicole Kidman and Jason Bateman star in another film that's playing at Tribeca, The Family Fang. You think we damaged you. You have kids, you're going to damage them. That's what parents do. So what? The two play the children of performance artists, played by Christopher Walken and Marianne Plunkett, who are known for elaborate hoaxes, including, maybe, their own deaths. It's about finding out that your parents aren't actually 
um, perfect and, you, and realizing that they're human beings with all their flaws. Bateman directed the film based on the best-selling Kevin Wilson novel. It opens nationwide May 6th. And that's your Eye on Entertainment. Terry Okita, CBS News, Los Angeles. All right, coming up on mid-morning, do you have hazardous products like pesticides that you'd really like to dispose of in your home? The word is, of course, do not pour them down the drain. Find out about the household hazardous waste collection next on WKYT. And Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $89 million. Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot, $227 million. And we welcome you back to WKYT's Mid Morning. And do you have hazardous materials at your home that you need to dispose of? Maybe gasoline, antifreeze, something like that. Here is your chance to get rid of them safely at the Household Hazardous Waste Collection. It's coming up this Saturday. We're joined now by Angela Poe and Lauren Monahan with the Division of Environmental Services and Public Works to learn more about it. Thanks for joining us. Glad Thanks to have you here. Us. Well, the first thing we've been talking about is if you have chemicals like this in your home, you're sort of stuck with something you need to find a way to dispose of because you should not pour that down the drain. Yes, please don't pour it down the drain. And so we um, provide this free opportunity to get rid of things in a safe manner. So Saturday we'll be out um, Old Frankfurt Pike from 8.30 in the morning until 4 o'clock and people can just load up their cars or vans or trucks or whatever and bring it out and we will dispose of it um, responsibly. And this is a very popular event. People like to take opportunity, the opportunity to do this and not have to worry about whether they're doing it the right way at home. Isn't that right? That is right. It's a great uh, time of year to kind of clean out your basement or garage um, and also spread the word to your neighbors who may not have heard about the opportunity yet. Um, we also have um, information on our social media. You can follow us at Live Green Lexington on Facebook and at Live Green Lex on Twitter for updated wait times um, for the event. That day. Oh, wow. Give us an idea of the range of products. You brought uh, some examples here uh, that, that people really should be very careful about the way they dispose of. Uh, anti a lot of car sorts of items, antifreeze, used motor oil. You can bring oil filters if you want to. Um, chemicals, lawn chemicals, um, gardening chemicals, a lot of cleaners, adhesives, paint. Um, we'll take oil-based paint, lead-based paint, and latex paint on Saturday. Um, the latex paint can be taken to restore um, year-round. But, you know, we're trying to make it a one-stop shop for disposing of those things that have been sitting around um, and that need special collection. Well, a lot of people who have probably never done it the right way may think, well, I don't have much to do. Mine won't hurt. Why is it so bad to do this the wrong way? Well, we want to give uh, residents of Lexington this opportunity because um, we definitely don't want these hazardous items poured down storm drains. It enters our water system. Um, we also don't want them to be disposed of in the regular trash because those end up in our landfills. So we want to make sure that these get uh, disposed of in the most environmentally safe way possible. Well, the big event is Saturday, and it is coming up from 8.30 until 4.30, and uh, no questions asked, just bring it by, drop it off there. You can call 311 for more information, or uh, visit the Urban County Government website, lexky.gov. Thanks for coming. Thank you so Appreciate much for having very us. Much. And be sure and check in on those wait times, right? Yes. On Saturday, that'll help a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, keep it right here this mid-morning. Yeah, back in a moment, we're going to check in with the Mr. Food Test Kitchen next and see what's cooking up here early in the new week. Coming up a little later today, WKYT News at noon. The latest on a deadly crash in Bourbon County. Now that we've learned the victim was a well-known Lexington cardiologist. Also, we're at the scene of a reported bank robbery in Lexington. And we'll take you to today's memorial for a UK student who was murdered a year ago. News, weather, and sports ahead at noon on WKYT. Well, are you craving some extra comfort after a long day? Here's a recipe that will hit the spot. Sure. Today in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, weeknight Salisbury steak. Way before anyone heard of the South Beach and Paleo diets, Dr. James Salisbury was touting a diet that was high in protein. One of the dishes that he not only made at home, but also made famous, was Salisbury steak. Since it took place in the late 1800s, it proves that everything old, sooner or later, becomes new again. So let me share with you a simple weeknight version of Dr. Salisbury's creation that I know you're going to love. All we do is combine some ground chuck with a chopped onion, a good amount of breadcrumbs, an egg, 
in a few off-the-shelf spices. After we gently mix that, we shape it into oval patties and place them in a baking dish. Now, to give these their rich flavor, we smother them with some beef gravy that we combine with some sliced mushrooms. About 45 minutes before it's time to eat, pop these in the oven, and by the time you open your mail and heat up some mashed potatoes, dinner is done. One forkful, and it's no wonder why these are still popular after all these years. It's comfort at its best. So, to salute the late Dr. Salisbury and to keep your taste buds happy, why don't you go online and get the recipe for our weeknight Salisbury steak so you can enjoy a goof-proof dinner any night of the week. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found an old-fashioned, trendy way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm -mm. All right, I know Micah could knock some of that out, right? I would, but I was telling you guys. <laughs> they fed earlier, you at Keeneland quite at well, Keeneland, right? I ate over a pound of steak. I know I did. Oh my god! I know I made myself sick. So well, we're glad that could... you're still moving, but it was wonderful, right? It wonderful. It was awesome. It was good. That's why I ate, you know, a pound of it. Uh, we're going through the day today and tomorrow. We're there in the low to mid 80s. Beautiful sunny skies. <laughs> Wednesday, only a small chance of rain. Wednesday. It's really Thursday and Friday. We start to see that rain pick up, which we're going to talk about that because we have some thunderstorms in there toward the end of the week. Ah, and later next in the time, week. Top it off yeah. with bread pudding. Yes, that's <laughs> all right. a good idea. Thank you so much for being with us at mid morning, and we will see you for all the latest here at noon. Have a great day.